This video is sponsored by LogRocket, the front-end performance monitoring application that gives you the power to see why bugs are happening and experience them just like your users. Try today at logrocket.com forward slash YT. Hey developers, how's it going? In this video, we're going to be taking a look at some very cool user interface libraries that support dark mode. Whether you are working on a vanilla JS project, whether you're working on a React project, maybe you're even doing some cross-platform mobile development there is something here for just about every front-end developer. Some of these are a little more labor-intensive than others. Another one I'm going to be showing you right off the bat is just plug and play. It is dead simple to implement. So we're going to start off with that one. This is a third-party library on GitHub. I will show you that really quick. And here is the GitHub page. Now, if we go back to the documentation, this is just a simple copy-paste to your code base. Right here is the CDN. If you want to use a CDN, you can use a CDN, but you can also use NPM. But to make this short and sweet, we're just going to use the CDN method. So what I have here is the code already set up in my file called darkmode.html. As you can see, the CDN was inserted right here in the head of my HTML document. Uh, no surprises of how this works. Most of us have probably done this countless times. Uh, so just paste that there. The only other thing you need to do to make this work is to add this script that invokes the widget. Now, if we go and check our file, this is light mode. And then if we want it dark, we'll just go down here to this widget. And at the click of a button, it turns to dark. This is a very simple example. Um, but you get the picture of just how succinct that syntax, that implementation is, dead simple. And I wanted to start off with that one just because it is so easy to use. Hey, do you hate wasting time recreating bugs in your apps? If so, click on any of the links in the top right of this video to get a free trial of LogRocket. LogRocket is a front-end application monitoring solution that helps you debug issues faster, identify performance problems, and create better user experiences. Enjoy the rest of the video. Now, my other file here is a bootstrap theme. I've also implemented dark mode in this file. And let's just go down here and I'll show you what this looks like. This dark mode, pretty, pretty simple to comprehend, right? Okay, it goes light to dark. But once we start adding dark mode to something with a lot of photos, a lot of gradients, a lot of graphics, the design and the interface becomes a little dubious. As you can see, the widget doesn't even start showing up until I get down to this darker panel right here. Kind of tricky thing when you're using larger photos, when you're using SVGs and all these colorful things, these colorful components, it's not always the best decision. So this is not a very good use case. And that's something to really keep in mind when you're thinking about implementing a UI library that has dark mode or any sort of framework that features a dark mode option. It doesn't always look great. And this really applies to sites that have big photos, big gradients, uh, these in-your-face SVGs and so on or a really complicated color scheme where there aren't a lot of light colors. It just doesn't make sense. Much more manageable, much more making sense is this kind of example where the default is a lot of light colors, then that user can easily go dark mode. Before we go to the next example, I do wanna backtrack and just illustrate how easy it is to toggle the most basic of dark modes. You can do this with a little bit of JavaScript and CSS by yourself. The problem with this type of dark mode is that it goes from black to white and it's very binary. Now, when we start working with frameworks and these advanced libraries that act as frameworks like React, uh, we need a little more nuance than just turning white things to black things. And that's where something like theming comes in and these different principles uh, Material Design has a really good documentation page on dark mode. How this documentation explains the reasons behind the dark theme and some of the considerations that you need to be thinking about when implementing dark theme. It takes the extra mile, the extra few miles, uh, when compared to something like this when you're just 
toggling from dark to light. So I guess what I'm trying to say is there are, there are very simple implementations and then there are more advanced implementations. And that's gonna come down to not only the library that you're using, but also the framework that you're using. Now, dark mode JS is great for vanilla JavaScript projects, but what if you're working with something like React? Well, you have a couple of options. Let's take a look at them right now. The first one we're gonna take a look at, we're gonna scooch on over to the code sandbox example here with Material UI. Now, Material UI is based on material design and Material UI is for use with React. And by using Material UI's palette, you can not only modify the color of the components to suit your brand, you can also whip up some very neat looking dark mode options. Now on the face of it, this looks a little more complicated than dark mode JS, but honestly, it's just a few lines of code that are making the dark mode happen here. So this is based on Material UI's palette option. And if we go down here in the documentation, they have a whole section for dark mode. Light is the default, but you can make the theme dark just by setting the type to dark. And as you can see right here, this is where that happens. And if I go back here just to illustrate light mode, it changes to light. And if we go to our CSS file, you may be surprised to see there's nothing here. So that really saves us a lot of time when we're trying to implement dark mode that we only really need to concern ourselves with the palette and using Material UI's themes that already exist for us. Such a great option if you're using Material UI. If you're not using Material UI and you're working on React, you still have some more options. Another one available to you is using emotions theming. Now this emotion is another CSS and JS library. I wanna show you the difference here. We do have in this app.js file a lot of CSS going on, but as far as toggling, let me, let me illustrate this. There's light mode, there's dark mode. This option of using emotion to create dark mode does create a little more work for the developer because as we can see in the index file, we are defining our own themes here. For example, in our theme light variable, we created something with a light background and colors for buttons and such that complement that. And then for our dark theme, we have a dark background. So we are using a little more of our coding skills with this, but this may be a solution. Again, if you're not using Material UI, you're not using some of these more heavy handed uh, libraries or framework Hey, it's me again. Do you hate wasting time recreating bugs in your apps? If so, click on any of the links in the top right of this video to get a free trial of LogRocket. LogRocket is a front-end application monitoring solution that helps you debug issues faster, identify performance problems, and create better user experiences. Enjoy the rest of the video. There's also another interesting option down here I want to call your attention to. It's called prefers color scheme. Now this is a CSS media query to check if the user has a preferred color scheme. And if it's dark, the user will see that app or see that page as dark mode. Um, but if it's light, if the user has set their preference to light, they will see it as default light and then have the option to change it to dark mode. Finally, this one is for my cross-platform mobile developers using Ionic. They have a dark mode. And if we go to the code pen here, this little toggle can illustrate that. We go from light to dark with the click of a button. Going over the documentation, the very first thing they mention is that media query that prefers color scheme media query that your user may have set. As a side note though, it does have limited browser support so it's not going to work for all your users, um, but better some than none. With Ionic, you do have the option of doing that auto enable of dark mode, but going down further, you can implement the toggle dark theme function when this app loads and then giving your user that control. There is a lot of CSS here for these colors to support dark mode, but fortunately right in the docs, they have the recommended combinations here. There are so many. There's the iOS dark theme there, and this is just your dark colors palette for the body. But oh my gosh, there is a ton of stuff. Fortunately, again, you could just copy those and put those in your project instead of having to develop these. Yeah, there's almost 150 lines there of CSS. 
So to save you that time, definitely check out the docs so you can use this to your advantage and save some time. To recap, these UI libraries that support dark mode, number one, the Ionic Framework has a great option here in their theming section. Number two, Material UI. Number three, using Emotion, a CSS and JS library. And number four, the utmost of simplicity, dark mode JS. S. I hope this video was helpful and has given you some ideas for how to implement dark mode for your users. Whether your users want to reduce their eye strain, whether it's a low lighting situation, or maybe they just like it dark, these libraries are going to help you cater to your users, creating a better user interface and a better user experience. Thanks developers for watching. As always, hope you're having a great day and we'll see you in the next video.